Hi everyone. So in other videos, I've talked about zip files, just zip a file up or unzip a file. But what does that mean? What does it mean to zip a file? What is a zip file? Well, it's really just an archiver. And on DOS, there are lots of different ways to archive files. And in fact, through the 1980s and the 1990s, you found lots of different competing file archivers. So I'm going to go over a couple of different of the more common archive files that you can find, at least in FreeDOS. We have a couple of different uh, open source archivers here. Now, if your favorite archiver isn't listed, it just may be that I didn't go over it, or it might be that it's a closed source thing. Here, I'm going to try and only do the archivers that you can find in FreeDOS. So let's take a look at some of the examples here. So uh, I've got a uh, sample directory here, but let me real quick show you that if you go into FDIMPLES, you can see that under archivers, I've installed a couple of different archivers. So I've installed ARG, uh, gzip, uh, tar, unzip, and zip, and also zoo. So we're gonna see how do you do those different archives in DOS. So I've got a sample program here, a sample project called Hello. And if I go into Hello, you can see it's just a sample program that when I run hello it just says hello world. I wanted to have a sample here that uh, shows an executable uh, with some text files and basically something to uh, archive up. So there's different ways that you can archive things. Well, the, one of the earliest archivers that you'll find is actually one from Unix and that's tar. It stands for the tape archive. And if I back up on directory, I can do a tar or a tape archive of that hello directory and all the files that are in it. So the way that I do that is with the tar command and I use the uh, uh, command C to create an archive and I need to tell it where it wants to go. So I need to give it F and then I'm going to tell it the file or the archive file that I want to use, which is hello dot tar. Now you might guess by the name that tar was used on tapes. Tape archive tar was definitely used on a lot of tapes to make tape backups. And in my time as a Unix systems administrator, I used tar a lot to make my backups. So we're going to do a tar cf into the file hello.tar. That's my archive file. And I want to tell it that I want to do the hello directory. Now you didn't get any output, but I did actually generate a hello.tar file. You can see there it is right there. Let's go ahead and delete that file, hello.tar. I'm going to tar it up one other way. And I'm going to say tar and then C and then V for verbose and then F for hello.tar and then the directory hello. And you can see that's going to actually print out the files that it's putting into my tar file. So if I do a directory, you can see that there's my hello.tar that I've now recreated. And the way that I can look at that, so what files are inside my tar file? Well, you can use the tar command again, and you can generate uh, what's called the table of contents. So you can do T, and then the file that you want, F, telling you that I want to read a file, and then hello.tar. You can see that's going to generate a list of the files that are inside my hello.tar archive file. If I wanted to see a little bit more detail, well, you kind of might guess based on how I created it with that V option. I'm going to use V again in uh, creating that table of contents. Do tar T V F hello dot tar. You can see I've got some extra details here about each of the files that are inside my archive file. Now, tar didn't actually compress this uh, archive file. It just generated a, a literal copy of everything. If I wanted to compress that, I need to use another program to do that. A common way that you do that is with the gzip command. That's the GNU zip command. Uh, and that is, uh, you're going to use uh, a, a, an option here, hyphen nine, and that will give the best possible compression. If I wanted to uh, give it into a specific output file, I might ask it to concatenate the output, so hyphen C, uh, and that'll put it into standard output, and then I can use the redirect to put it into a specific file. But let's actually zip up what I want to have here, which is hello.tar, and we're going to put that into the file hello.tgz. So if you ever find any of these tgz files around, that is a tar file that's been uh, gzipped. And if I do a directory, you can see that that 29k file has now been shrunken down to 
uh, about 11 and a half K. So it's a, uh, a pretty short uh, file here. Another way that I could do that is with, uh, without the, the hyphen C, I can just do a gzip uh, hyphen nine and then uh, hello.tar. And uh, gzip will try its best to try and find a file name that uh, will end in a Z. And so you'll see that this is gonna create a file called hello.taz. And so there it is. Now compress the file to hello.taz. And because I use the same hyphen nine, so the best possible compression, uh, that's going to give me the same size file of about 11 and a half K. Now, how do I get files out of that? Well, I need to, uh, G unzip that first. So I'm going to do a G unzip on hello dot Taz. And, uh, there's actually, uh, no G unzip on, on FreeDOS. Now on Linux systems, you'll find a G unzip. And so how do you unzip stuff? on FreeDOS. Well, you're going to use the gzip command again. You're going to do gzip and we're going to ask it to decompress a file with hyphen D and then hello.taz. And so now let's give me my hello.tar file again. And now I can, if I wanted to, I could extract it. Let's go ahead and create a, a place to put it. So we'll create a, a directory called X and we'll go into that directory called X and then we'll do a tar extracting x the file dot dot hello dot tar and you can see now that i've created a directory called hello uh, with all the files that are in it and so that's one way that you can do archives is by using uh, the tar command now that's that's going to give you files that are compatible with uh, Linux system. So if you need to extract files on Linux, that's, that's not a bad way to do it. Let's get rid of my X directory here. Now, what's another way that we can do an archive? Well, a, a popular archive throughout the 1980s, or at least the mid 1980s, uh, was a format called zoo. And you saw this a lot on Usenet. So if you were on Usenet, you, you might find a lot of zoo files and we're going to do that with the zoo command. Now we're going to uh, use the similar kind of command line that we used with tar, except we're going to see it's going to fail. So we're going to, uh, in this case, a to add files to a zoo file and we'll do hello.zoo. And then I want to uh, put in there all the files from the directory. Hello. So we'll do the same thing we did under tar. We'll just say hello. That, oops. Couldn't open hello because it needs to be a list of files. So uh, let's go ahead and do that again. So you can see I didn't actually create a file. So we'll do a zoo a hello.zoo and we'll just say everything inside the hello directory. So we'll do hello slash star dot star. And you can see it's actually created uh, all these different files uh, in my hello uh, dot zoo file. So do a dir and there's my hello dot zoo little bigger than a gzipped tar file. Now let's look inside that zoo file. So we'll do a zoo and then L to list the contents then hello dot zoo. And you can see that it's showing uh, hello and then the different uh, files inside my hello directory. And so that was a pretty popular file format. Another file format that you found though, uh, oh, let's go ahead and extract that. So we'll, we'll create another directory here called X and we'll go into X and we'll extract it. So we'll do a zoo. Uh, I want to extract that. So we'll do X and then it's up one directory. Hello dot zoo. And you can see now it's created a directory called hello and inside hello are all my files. So that's one other way that you can archive your files. Another popular file format was one called ARG. So ARG was uh, one of two very popular archive file formats. The other one was zip. Uh, and you'll sometimes come across ARG files here and there. So let's go learn how to use ARG. So I'm going to use the ARG command. And very similar to zoo, to add files, I'm going to do an A. And I'll just do hello.arg. 
and then the directory hello. And you can see it's showing the output that it is uh, creating an arg file with all of these different files in it. And if I do a directory, you can see that my arg file is about the size of the uh, gzipped tar file, uh, smaller than the zoo. So you can see why this is more popular than zoo. Uh, when all your files have to fit onto, at the time, a probably a 360k floppy, um, saving space <laughs> meant a lot. So uh, how do I look inside that file? Well, similar to what we did with zoo, we're going to do arg and then L to list the contents, hello.arg. And so you can see that's the contents of my arg file. Let's go ahead and create an X directory so I can extract into it. And then let's go ahead and extract the files here. So we'll do arg X to extract and then the hello.arg file. And it's going to ask me, do I want to create that directory hello? Yes, I do. And so there it is. It's created my five files inside the hello directory. The most popular archive format is zip. So uh, zip is actually the file format itself is under the public domain. So anybody is able to use uh, zip as a file format without having to pay any royalties. And that's one of the reasons that zip really took off and everybody used zip files. It was actually not a bad compression format either. So how do we use zip? So zip has a ton of different command line options. Let's do zip without any uh, command line options itself. And we'll see, it'll dump out a help screen. Uh, and so you can see here that all the different options that you can use inside zip, uh, similar to what we did with gzip, uh, dash one will compress faster, not as well. Dash nine will compress better. So it'll take a little longer, uh, but for what I'm doing here, uh, we're not going to notice the difference. And so, uh, you also want to do hyphen R to go inside the directories to recurse inside those directories. Uh, remember, uh, zoo and tar and arg kind of figured it out on their own. They need to go into those directories, but zip needs to have that hyphen R. So I don't have a hello.zip, so let's go ahead and create one. Uh, let's create it without the hyphen R, so we'll, just to see what it looks like. So we'll do a zip hyphen 9, hello.zip, and then the directory hello. And you can see it's just going to create the directory entry hello, and that's not helpful at all. So let's go ahead and uh, get rid of a hello.zip. Oops, delete. Hello.zip. And let's go ahead and recreate it. So we're going to do a zip hyphen 9, because that's the best possible compression. And I want to recurse into each directory, so I'm going to do a hyphen r, hello.zip, and then the directory hello. And so now you can see it's created my directory entry, hello, with the five files that are inside it. And you do a directory, and you can see that the zip file is about the same size as what we're seeing for the arg file and the gzipped tar file. A little bit bigger, but again, nobody has to pay uh, royalties to use a zip file format. It's a very popular open file format, and you're getting about the same compression. So it just sort of everybody used uh, zip files. Now, how do we look inside that zip file? We're going to use the unzip command. And if I just do unzip without any options, you can see I'm going to get a big list of options on this help screen. And I want to do unzip hyphen L to look inside it, so list, and then hello.zip. And you can see it's going to list out what the contents are. Now, there's other ways you can extract this. We, let's, let's do the same way you did it before. We're going to create a new directory here called X, just so I, I'm not overwriting anything I've already got. And we're going to do unzip on the file hello. Dot zip. You don't actually have to give any options if you just want to extract it. The command name implies what you're doing. You're trying to unzip the file. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip hello.zip, and it's so now going to create the directory and the five files inside it. But there's another way that you can do that. Let's back up a directory. If I wanted to extract the hello.zip file, but specifically put it into a different directory as my base directory. So instead of X, it'll be something else. And so I'm going to do an unzip 
on hello.zip with a hyphen D. That's going to give me a destination of where it's going to go. And instead of X, let's just call it X2. And you can see that's going to now create the X2 directory and then the hello inside it and the five files inside that. And so if I go inside X2, you can see that I've got the hello and X2. Hello. And so these are the popular, some popular ways that you can archive files on FreeDOS. It's a easy way to uh, just collect a bunch of different files and uh, make them smaller. Uh, if you're going to be sharing files with other people or specifically sharing your applications, that's a great way to zip up your files so that other people can use them. Uh, before I go, let me thank everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen, so thank you very much for your support. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here for that, so thank you very much for that. Visit our website at freedust.org. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.